Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Jimmy's Digital Series 2021. Uh, today's topic is on Asia Pacific reimagining industry towards the digital and sustainable twin transitions in Asia Pacific. Uh, this is a side event of the Global Manufacturing and Industrialization Summit, Jimmy's. Uh, so my name is uh, Marco Camilla. I'm the chief of the uh, Innovation and Digitalization Division at UNIDO, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization based in Vienna, Austria. Uh, and now let us uh, begin with a keynote address from His Excellency Agus Gumiwan Kartasasmita, Minister of Industry of Indonesia. Excellency, the floor is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May peace be upon us all. His Highness, Mr. Muhammad bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Prime Minister of United Arab Emirates. Excellency, Mr. Datolim Jokhoi, Secretary General, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Ms. Armida Ali Shabana, Executive Secretary, Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. Mr. Lee Yong, Director General, United Nations Industrial Development Organization. Distinguished members of government of United Arab Emirates. Distinguished Indonesian cabinet ministers, colleagues. Participants of Global Manufacturing Industrial Summit 2021 Digital Series. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me express my sincere appreciation to the government of United Arab Emirates in hosting this Global Manufacturing Industrial Summit, one of the biggest events in industrial sector. As we are all aware, the COVID-19 pandemic has given enormous challenges to manufacturing industry and catalysts to industrial sector in implementing Industrial Re Revolution 4.0 digital transform transformation, and also a great opportunity in economic recovery caused by the pandemic. Implementation of Industry 4.0 within the Asia-Pacific region is seeing considerable gaps and are in different stages between various countries. However, this region is still continuing to demonstrate the advancement of applying the 4.0 concept and its utilization to achieve sustainable industry and reduce industrial impact to the environment. One notable accomplishment that we are proud of is ASEAN nation have launched ASEAN Digital Master Plan 2025 in promoting ASEAN's economy. In the endeavor, of accelerating the implementation of Industry 4.0, Indonesia, in cooperation with UNIDO, successfully organized the first regional conference on industrial development, which successfully delivered eight points of Bali Agenda on Industry 4.0. As a follow-up to this event, Indonesia will also host RCID 2.0, on 10 to 11 November 2021. This event welcomes UNIDO members in Asia Pacific region to focus more on how Industry 4.0 could encourage in achieving inclusive and sustainable development, which is expected to be path to COVID-19 recovery. Indonesia is keen to share to the world its roadmap in implementing Industry 4.0. According to the roadmap, by 2030, Indonesia aspires to become one of the 10 largest economies in the world. Making Indonesia 4.0 campaign initially started with five priority sectors, which are food and beverage industry, automotive industry, electronic industry, chemical industry, and textile and apparel industry. 
These five sectors cumulatively contribute to 70% of total manufacturing GDP, 65% manufacturing export, and 60% manufacturing workforces. Furthermore, the current COVID-19 pandemic provides opportunities for both medical devices and also pharmaceutical industries to spring up, making the number of priority sectors to seven. In response to and recognizing the importance of hands-on experience, the Minister of Industry is embarking on the development of Industry 4.0 Center of Innovation and Industry 4.0 Human Resources Development or PD 4.0. These ventures are digital manufacturing learning centers aimed at assisting companies advances their operation, design, and productivity at the entire value chain. Ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia's demographic profile portrays a prospective economic outlook. It is home to 270 million of people, where 70.7% of which are in their productive ages, where it will be peaked by the year of 2030. As a key investment destination, Indonesia has 128 industrial estates fully operational in 2021. These states are located not only in Java, but are spread out through Sumatra, Kalimantan, Sulawesi, and Maluku. Of course, we welcome global investment for high technology industries at industrial estate in Java, where some of smart industrial parks have already existed. Distinguished guests, Indonesia believes that the implementation of Industry 4.0 does not only offer solution to the industrial development, but also in overcoming environmental issues. Thus, Indonesia urges international collaboration in Industry 4.0, including Asia-Pacific region. Lastly, I hope that GMIS continue to discuss collective steps for the region in twin transition, namely Industry 4.0 implementation for digital transition and Industry 4.0 as a motor in environmental issues for sustainable transition. Finally, I thank, I thank you all for the opportunity entrusted to Indonesia for co-hosting GMIS Digital Series 2021 Asia-Pacific Region Roadshow, reimagining industry toward the digital and sustainable twin transition in Asia-Pacific. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Excellency, for those reflections. Uh, we have also been honored with some thoughts from His Excellency, Mr. Chan Prasit, Minister of Industry, Science, Technology, and Innovation of Cambodia. Excellency, the floor is yours. His Excellency Joko Widodo, President of the Republic of Indonesia. His Excellency Dato Lim Chokhoi, Secretary General of ASEAN. Her Excellency Amida Salsia Ali Chabana, Executive Secretary of UNSCAP. His Excellency Lee Yong, Director General of UNIDO. Colleague ministers, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, allow me to thank UNIDO and the Ministry of Industry and Advanced Technology of the United Arab Emirates for inviting me to join this panel discussion. There were, in the past, many forums in which leaders and experts were discussing the future of man manufacturing during the fourth industrial revolution. We were very anxious to find out what the future will bring us. Disruptive technologies will affect jobs and markets. Some types of traditional industry will disappear. Some will emerge, mostly those with advanced technologies. And on top of that, the burden and pressure from climate change and ongoing trade wars between the superpowers. Will the Asian 
economies and their SMEs survive in such an environment. The current global COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated the already tense situation. We are now talking about trying to adapt ourselves to live in the new normal. I think it would be wise to say that we shall now try to live in a never normal world. Science, technology, and innovation are progressing at dizzying speed. Just imagine that 92% of all data in the world has been saved during the last two years. Upon such a backdrop, what will the Asian SMEs evolve? I think going digital may be a solution for them. And how? A variety of business functions of a small business can be enhanced through digitalization, social networking, QR codes, mobile apps, and digital interfaces can change marketing, customer service, payments, inventory management, accounting, banking, and supply chain management, and improve speed and efficiency. Digitalization also help in reducing errors and scaling operations faster. Surely, the small and medium enterprises have a lot to benefit from if they adopt digitalization. Digitalization changes structures that we are incapable to see. Increased digital engagement will allow SMEs to explore new markets, enabling them to compete with the bigger giants in the industry. E-commerce has provided cost-effective solutions for the companies in large cities and rural areas alike to connect and trade with customers around the world. SMEs can often lack the skill to enter international markets due to limited knowledge, language barriers, and unfamiliarity with cultural differences and narrow business outlook. The reality in our countries is not much different from one another. SMEs are still slow to adopt, to adopt and adapt or change. And the main causes of this low adoption are well known, just to name a few. One is the lack of understanding of the benefits that technology can deliver across end-to-end -end value change. Two is the lack of guidance on the inherent abilities of technologies and how these can be integrated and institutionalized in their businesses. Three, resistant to incurring upfront investment related costs to implement in technology. Four, lack of skilled manpower to manage technology setups. Five, lack of business development services support. SME cluster zone support services, six inadequate policies to support SMEs, and so on and so forth. For the case of Cambodia, progress towards digitalization, digital transformation is our government's goal. Most recently, our government has rolled out a policy framework on digital economy and society, aiming at transforming Cambodia into a digital-based economy and society by the year 2035. Our government has foreseen the importance of science, technology, and innovation, STI, as a pivotal driving force and a locomotive for economic development in this digital era and build back better, especially from COVID-19, through the recent revamp of my ministry from the Ministry of Industry and Handicraft, MIH, to the Ministry of Industry, Science, Technology and Innovation, MISTI, and the creation of the National Council on Science, Technology and Innovation, NCSDI, to oversee and determine the directionality of STI policy. We have designed and adopted Cambodia STI Roadmap 2030. And in this roadmap, 
we target five main pillars, governance, education, research, collaboration, and ecosystem. This roadmap provides a guidance to all key stakeholders in the national innovation ecosystem and is believed to enable and accelerate our structural transformation towards a digital enabled society. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, our countries stand to lose if we are not reimagining industry. Let us together imagine how the roadblocks should be removed. Let us together imagine what ecosystem our economies need. Let us imagine together how we can harness our digital transformation. Let's go hand in hand towards a better future together for ourselves and for our next generation. With the guidance and inspiration we can collect at today's panel discussion and from the ASEAN Digital Master Plan 2025, I am confident we will be able to develop more intra-regional cooperation in the Asia Pacific toward the smooth digital and green transformation. I thank you all for your attention and please stay safe from COVID-19. Thank you, Minister, for that food for thought. Our next keynote address is kindly provided by Ms. Armida Salciat Ali Yasbana, Executive Secretary, United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia Pacific. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to speak at this Asian edition of the GMIS Digital Series 2021. Since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, progress in the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals in Asia and Pacific is falling short of its 2020 milestones. The lessons learned from the pandemic is the need to build back better with resilience, inclusiveness, and sustainability. Digital technology and private sector innovation provide us all with opportunities to reimagine industry to meet this objective. First, on digital technology, the pandemic has highlighted more than ever the importance of digital technologies. Digital technologies have enabled governments to implement social protection schemes and popularize e-health, while digital finance and e-commerce have allowed business to continue to operate, trade, and remain resilient. However, this rapid digital transformation is not without its issues. Ensuring that we leave no one behind during this digital transformation is one of the greatest challenges. Everyone online on this session today has access to the digital world. Imagine what life would be like during the pandemic if you didn't. This is the reality for more than 2 billion people in the Asia-Pacific region. Those who have no access to the four core foundations of the digital economy simply cannot engage in the rapidly evolving digital world. These four foundations include internet access, digital skills, digital financing, and e-commerce. Therefore, inclusion must be at the heart of digital policies if the promise of leave no one behind is to be met. With this in mind, ESCAP's Inclusive Technology and Innovation Strategy has focused on addressing this core foundation of the digital economy. Our Asia-Pacific Information Superhighway Initiative aims to bridge this digital divide. And our Asian Pacific Training Center for Information and Communication Technology for Development equips policymakers and young people alike with the digital skills needed to engage in the digital economy. While our Catalyzing Women's Entrepreneurship Initiative enhances innovative digital financing to support women entrepreneurs who have been hit harder than most during the pandemic. Second, private sector innovation. The private sector has been a source of innovation and economic dynamism in the region. However, to achieve SDGs, innovative government policies that incentivize businesses to focus on creating social and environmental impact 
and economic value are urgently required. The pandemic has provided us with the opportunity to reset and reimagine the objectives of industry in the new normal to move from entrepreneurship to social entrepreneurship, business as usual to inclusive business, and investing for profit to investing for impact. The SDGs are increasingly transforming how the private sector operates to achieve inclusive and sustainable development. Corporations are beginning to realign their priorities with the SDGs. Innovative business models such as social enterprises, inclusive businesses, and impact investment funds are emerging, aimed to address social and environmental challenges as well as provide products and services to those at the base of the economic pyramid. In this regard, ESCAP has worked with several governments to spearhead policy innovations on this agenda. The ASEAN Inclusive Business Guidelines, which was endorsed by ASEAN Economic Ministers last year, the Thailand Social Enterprise Act, and the Bangladesh Advisory Board for Impact Investment are just some examples. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, let me reiterate the importance of putting inclusion at the heart of digital policies if the promise of leave no one behind is to be met and the need for industrial policies to integrate social and environmental objectives alongside the economic imperative. ESCAP stands ready to work with governments and all relevant stakeholders to obtain these objectives. I wish you a very successful meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you for those reflections, Ms. Alish Yavana. In this final video address, we will hear from Mr. Lee John, Director General, United Nations Industrial Development Organization. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to speak at this Asia Pacific session of the GMS Digital Series 2021. My thanks to our GMS co chairs, the Ministry of Industry and Advanced Technology of the United Arab Emirates for convening this session. Likewise, a special thanks to our co-host for this session, the Ministry of Industry of Indonesia. We look forward to furthering our cooperation with the government of Indonesia as they assume the G20 presidency in 2022, and also as we collaborate with Ministry of Industry on the second regional conference on industrial development that will take place in November, amongst other initiatives. Industrialization and technology development have always been successful strategies for poverty eradication, especially in Asia. In the late 20th century, the East Asia Tigers made huge progress through a dedicated policy framework for higher value manufacturing. In the 21st century, China has become a major manufacturer and arguably leading technology development in some sectors, such as 5G. However, like other regions, Asia also suffers from deep inequalities. From a digital perspective, the UNIDO's Industrial Development Report 2020 identifies that while some Asian economies are leading with respect to advanced innovation patents and exports, several others are struggling to adapt to the fourth industrial revolution. In fact, some countries are still seeking to join the second or third industrial revolutions. As much as the COVID-19 pandemic is accelerating digitalization, as countries and firms increase their uptake of digital solutions and the tools to maintain their industrial sectors and the essential value chains, the digital divide is also deepening. A widening of the digital divide will only increase poverty, leading to pressures in other areas regionally. We must strive to create a landscape in which groups such as micro, small, and medium enterprises women, young people, and migrants can access advanced technologies on an equal basis. 
Unido is working towards this vision. For instance, we are also working closely with farmers in the fishery sector in Indonesia to deliver better traceability through the digitalization and to ensure that they are able to participate effectively and be competitive in the global international market. Through the Unido's investment and the technology promotion offices, we are working closely with SMEs across the world to help them upgrade to smart manufacturing to build better linkages between technology producers and the investors in Asia. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Asia has immense potential to achieve inclusive and sustainable industrialization. As per goal nine of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, as part of the international community, and as UN looks ahead to the next 25 years through its common agenda, UNIDO is confident that multi-stakeholder partnerships can deliver the local insight and knowledge needed to spur action. Let us take the opportunity from today's event to facilitate such partnerships. We look forward to hearing your insights and would also hope that you will join us for the 2021st summit in Dubai from 22nd to 27th November. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. With that, we move on to the discussion panel segment of the session. With us today, we have Dr. Annabel Briones, who has a distinguished track record in environmental research spanning nearly 40 years. Prior to her present occupation at the Department of Trade and Industry of the Philippines. Welcome, Dr. Briones. Our second guest is Ms. Buti Tukuyen, Acting Director, International Cooperation Department, Directorate for Standards, Metrology and Quality, STAMET, Vietnam. Welcome to Ms. Kuyen also. So I have a first question for Dr. Briones. Uh, the fourth industrial revolution is sometimes portrayed as a struggle between economic efficiency and increased inequality. Can digital technologies be disseminated for win-wins in the Asia-Pacific region? Thank you for that question, uh, Dr. Marco. Industry, uh, industry 4.0 may be portrayed as a struggle between economic efficiency and, in, and increase in equality. And, may, and I may agree that digital technologies can be disseminated for win-wins in the Asia-Pacific region. Uh, this is according to the Asian Economic Integration Report of 2021, a publication of the Asian Development uh, Bank. Countries in the Asia-Pacific region have leveraged rapid technological progress and digitalization to recover and connect to the global economy during the pandemic. And uh, Chief Economist uh, Yasuki Sawada of the uh, Asian Development Bank said that technology is helping to forge new global linkages which offer enormous economic opportunities, but it also offers new risks and challenges. Thus, policies and regulations must be in place to manage and maximize the gains from the flourishing digital economy and enhance regional cooperation. And uh, according to one article of uh, Conrad Adenauer, System. Asia is more advanced in terms of the digitalization process of the economy and society than any part of the world. And the Asia Pacific region has ready itself for the effect of digital transformation. And Asian countries are leading in technologies and trends such as uh, artificial intelligence, self driving cars, financial technology, and also the electronic health. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Briones, for an interesting uh, answer. So I think uh, uh, in the Asia-Pacific region, so the foreign industrial revolution is uh, advancing at full steam. So now, Ms. Kuyen, Vietnam has made major strides with respect to in industrialization in recent decades, having risen to middle-income country status. So what are the industrial policy goals of the country? Is for a year, part of the plan. 
Um, thank you very much uh, for the question. I think uh, in recent years, Vietnam has uh, um, uh, achieved uh, a lot uh, of uh, the uh, achievements uh, in the ec economic development. And uh, in terms of the uh, industrial policy uh, goals, uh, and so we recently we have already recognized the importance of the uh, digital transformation uh, for our, our country. And especially, uh, this is a very uh, great uh, opportunity for the enterprises in Vietnam uh, to um, uh, uh, to um, to develop further in the future, and uh, and so um, uh, there are uh, already uh, there have already been uh, the resolution uh, of uh, the um, uh, political bureau and also the um, government uh, and also the national program uh, in uh, in terms of the uh, digital transformation and. Uh, and uh, especially uh, on the smart manufacturing uh, in, uh, in Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam together with uh, ASEAN, uh, we developed the uh, roadmap uh, to uh, promote the um, uh, smart manufacturing in the region. Uh, and uh, uh, with that uh, aim, uh, so uh, we uh, try to learn the best practice of the world um, and uh, also uh, to, um, to support uh, the enterprises on the smart manufacturing. And, and uh, GMIS uh, is also a very uh, important forum uh, for us to learn uh, about the experience. Many thanks, uh, Ms. Kujen. Uh, so now, Ms. Briones, uh, so talking about the environment, so what policy instruments need to be leveraged or developed uh, in the region to better support breakthrough innovations and technology enabled solutions at the intersection of the digital uh, and the green transition? Uh, thank you. Uh, I firmly believe that countries should act and work together. Uh, policy instruments shall focus on the following. Uh, regulatory addressing the need for new regulations. Uh, standards and norms in the region to, uh, to address trade barriers, quality products, uh, also cybersecurity and data management. And there would be uh, economic uh, uh, international agreements no, to address economic, to mitigate potential risk of the industrial 4.0, and also to monitor the progress and the uptake of digital technologies at the global, regional, and sectoral levels and mitigating uh, potential negative regional surplus of new technologies and ensuring that the opportunities made possible by digital technologies can be used to realize inclusive and sustainable economic development uh, as well as generation, diffusion and adoption of cutting edge technologies including wireless uh, technologies. So we really need an international agreements and regional co uh, cooperations. And then also implementing a regional framework, supporting the ICT sector for sustainable digitalization, and also the regional implementation of green industrial policy involving climate stability, health, uh, poverty prevention, creation of quality jobs, and uh, also reduction of inequality. So the policy should be perceived as a continuous learning process to deal with information problems and high uncertainties and risk, setting a clear direction towards clean and away from dirty. Many thanks, Ms. Briones, for comprehensive uh, answer. Uh, so now at UNIDO, uh, standards and norms uh, is one of uh, our major uh, areas of work. Uh, so Ms. Kuyen, so what, what role can digital standards play uh, in the digital and sustainable twin transition of countries in the Asia Pacific region? Yeah, thank you, Marco. That is a very interesting uh, question and uh, is for us uh, into the areas of the standards uh, and conformance 
and the, especially the role of the digital standards. And when we uh, talk about the role of the um, digital uh, standards or uh, the role of standards in general, so we, we will uh, ask the, uh, the, the another question. And so what will the world uh, be without, the, uh, without standards? And, uh, and so um, uh, with uh, um, that, uh, so uh, in, uh, I, I think that um, uh, if without the standards, uh, it will be a mess. And, and so, uh, so for the, uh, it will be very different from this country to another country. And so is uh, um, the uh, machine now uh, can, um, can uh, and, and, and the equipment can be uh, manufactured uh, in any country in the world. And so without the digital standards, it will not uh, uh, play it uh, very well um, uh, and, and, and will be the mess, uh, the things that. Uh, and so uh, with that, uh, so uh, I think um, that uh, in the, um, for, especially for the country in Asia Pacific, there is uh, very important that we uh, coordinate together uh, not, uh, under the international co um, uh, standardization bodies, um, uh, uh, organization ISO and IEC to uh, uh, an ITU. Uh, there is a collaboration between the, uh, these uh, organizations uh, in order to uh, develop the international standards uh, to support the uh, reason in the digital and sustainable uh, twin, uh, transition of countries in, uh, in the whole country, uh, in, in the whole world, as well as in Asia Pacific uh, in particular. Thank you, Ms. Kuyen. Uh, so now, uh, one of the major constraints is always the finance. And, and now we have also uh, the uh, uh, cross-cutting uh, gender uh, issue. Uh, so what is needed to bridge the financing and gender gaps with respect to green technologies and the circular economy? Uh, so please, Ms. Briones, if you have a, a thought on this. Okay, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, we all know that financing and gender gaps uh, vary in uh, specific countries or region. So I believe that women should have access to and use digital technologies uh, to address gender gaps. So this the digital technologies must be universal, affordable, and conditional, meaningful, and equal, and must meet uh, women's varying circumstances, needs, and priorities. And the accessibility is also crucial for achieving digital inclusion, including finance or income, education, and employment uh, opportunities. And we require more involvement by women as entrepreneurs, investors, and business uh, leaders that would also help redress the extensive deficit in female leadership and provide much needed role models for girls in education and early careers. And uh, we must have more women involvement in the development process as users, consumers, researchers, and developers, and engaging women in the circular economy to raise awareness on sustainable consumption and encouraging participation in leadership and managerial roles and also to increase access to relevant financial services on appropriate terms. And we should uh, also provide innovation funds, capacitating the financial sector to help startups, provide financial literacy training to entrepreneurs, and the uh, allocation of funds and grant schemes geared at increasing uh, female enrollment in the science and technology uh, um, pathway, uh, education, and participation in R&D initiatives combined with the implementation of awareness campaigns in uh, opposition to socio sociocultural norms, prejudices, stereotypes, and that can also reinforce women's in entrepreneurship mindset and engagement in innovation. 
So Philippines ranked 17 in the Global Gender Gap Report uh, and second in the Asia Pacific region. So while a relatively low gender gap characterizes the Philippines, we still have to address uh, terms of poverty. So one way to start overcoming this problem is to make entrepreneurship more accessible. And that's what we are doing at the Department of Science and Technology, where I am working. Many thanks, thank Ms. Briones, for highlighting uh, the progress in Philippines. And now following your answer, a question for uh, Ms. Kuyen. Uh, how can small and medium-sized uh, firms uh, can leverage the foreign industrial revolution to increase their sustainability and the circularity? Uh, yes, yeah, some people say uh, that um, uh, the um, uh, industrial revolution for Paris Euro uh, will create the opportunities and challenges for the companies. And uh, for um, uh, the small and, uh, um, and medium enterprises, um, I, I think if they have a very good plan and the strategy, and they can uh, uh, make use of the uh, industrial revolution for point zero in the future, and it will be a very great opportunity for them. Uh, for example, in terms of the smart manufacturing, they, uh, uh, um, if uh, in uh, comparisons with the very big uh, company, um, they cannot uh, invest into a very big amount of money. However, they can, um, uh, they, they, they can become smarter uh, for the uh, SME. And so they can make use of uh, the best of the, um, uh, the, the industrial revolution uh, with the very updated and advanced technology. And, uh, and the uh, efficiency of the labor force uh, make use of uh, the, 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 this uh, opportunity in order to uh, become um, very, very uh, developed and increase uh, their um, productivity. Uh, and, um, uh, and, and this is a very important and uh, uh, to become uh, sustainable and they should have a very, uh, very, very uh, good strategy for themselves, yeah, and 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 uh, together to get uh, to uh, achieve their goals uh, and make use of the industrial revolution for point zero. Many thanks, Miss Kudian. Uh, so now, uh, Miss Briones, we know that the Department of Trade and Industry of the Philippines is very active uh, on on climate policy. Uh, so my question is, how can innovation and scale in digital technologies uh, allow countries to achieve their commitments under the Paris Agreement? Okay, so in the Philippines, the Philippines committed to around 70% uh, reduction of the greenhouse gas emission as per the Paris Agreement. Uh, agreement. And increasing manufacturing efficiency through smart technologies aided by artificial intelligence may help in achieving the commitment. And uh, we all know that the global economy is already transformed by digitalization. And as we progress further into the fourth industrial revolution, uh, there is mounting evidence that discoveries in information technology and biotechnology promise to provide a more prosperous and sustainable future for all. So while there is an immediate need to expedite and reinforce technological innovation, the grand challenge is guaranteeing that new technologies serve a clear objective for the planet. So maximizing existing technologies such as cloud computing, first generation industrial automation, and 3G and 4G mobile networks at various uh, stages of development secures the groundwork for significant operational efficiencies. So mean, meanwhile, the uh, artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, 5G, drones, and other emerging technologies that rely on connectivity bring up entirely new possibilities. So this information and communication technologies provide monitoring solutions, mitigating and adapting to the effects of climate change. So however, uh, these technologies also contribute to global emissions and waste during their manufacturing, uh, 
uh, use and obsolescence, and they are dependent on the source of energy being used. So there will be pros and cons of ICTs and frontier technologies and should be carefully evaluated by monitoring the increase of the carbon footprint of the digital ecosystem while more people connect to the internet. So the government must ensure that the sector's strict compliance to the international standards for energy efficient, uh, efficient ICTs and then the reuse and repurposing of decommissioned ICTs and the employment of eco-design principles which address the envir environmental implications of products uh, concerning energy and resource uh, consumption over their entire life cycle can lessen uh, e-waste. So with the correct uh, legislative framework and strong climate uh, leadership, these technologies will be critical in transitioning societies to a circular and lean economy oriented on increasing service value while minimizing uh, environmental damage. So for economic benefits, it will improve efficiencies. And uh, for environmental benefits, uh, the digi digital technologies may offer less waste, a lower resource consumption. And for social benefits, it will also provide a more inclusive labor market and higher value adding. Many That's thanks, uh, Ms. Briones, for okay. very detailed uh, comments. Uh, now we know that uh, Vietnam uh, is, is particularly very visible uh, in the area of cooperation and partnerships. So, so my last question is, how can the triangular and south-south cooperation help countries to adjust to the demands of the 4IR globally? What uh, kind of supports are required? Yeah, and so um, in this um, uh, theory, I uh, would like to focus in on the uh, standardization area. Um, in, um, uh, in terms of standardization, uh, the, uh, it seems that we are not quite familiar with the South-South cooperation. However, we have another spirit that is uh, um, that is the, the, the cooperation among the country, among developing country, and uh, as well as the, the, uh, according to the uh, ISO uh, agenda uh, 2030. Uh, so uh, we have one of the pillar that is uh, every voice is heard. And so in, uh, with that uh, spirit, and so uh, at the international level, it encouraged uh, the cooperation among uh, the um, uh, countries um, in uh, ISO and, uh, and also the, um, the support uh, of uh, um, uh, the country, uh, developed country with the developing country. And uh, through the like uh, uh, different program, for example, in the uh, standardization area, we have the training program. And so uh, it helped each other in us. Uh, and also another is that at uh, the national level. And so uh, we have a kind of uh, uh, the participation of uh, many, uh, many stakeholders in the standard development. And so uh, in, uh, from our perspective, uh, the standardization perspective, uh, there's still the cooperation and uh, uh, among uh, at the international level and in uh, at the national level as well. Many thanks, uh, Ms. Kuyen, for uh, and, and thanks to both of you for those excellent contributions and for bringing the perspective of uh, Philippines and Vietnam uh, to this event. Uh, I really, we really appreciate. Uh, so finally, I thank our distinguished audience uh, for joining us today, and we look forward to greeting them at the Four Global Manufacturing and Industrialization Summit to take place from 22 to 27 November 2021 in Dubai under the theme of Rewiring Societies, Reshaping Digitalization for Prosperity. Many thanks and see you there.